Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm going to try out the brand Two Bird Press with this super adorable cat puzzle. Uh, so Two Bird Press are somewhat new um, in the puzzle world. They uh, formed in 2020 and have since then put out, I think about five different puzzles. Um, and they seem to be based in Canada from what I can tell. I actually ordered this one uh, from their website and uh, surprisingly the international postage was really reasonable. I think it was only like maybe five US dollars or something like that. So quite, quite inexpensive. Um, and then what surprised me, or maybe I should have guessed, is it actually turned up through Amazon. So I think you can actually buy their puzzles both on their website and through Amazon, but they, I guess, have some arrangement where they just send the order through Amazon to uh, allow for more reasonable postage. So yeah, but it turned up pretty quick and yeah, really happy with, you know, how it turned up. So yeah, great. Um, so this puzzle is called uh, Puzzled Cats, funnily enough, and yeah, it's just such a really, well, I mean, it's an adorable puzzle. It basically features all these really colorful and cute uh, sort of comical cats. And uh, they're all just sort of doing different things and wearing different things. Some of them have like one's got a bow tie. Some have cute little necklaces and fancy collars. One's got a scarf on, um, you know, and then there's all these like cute sort of cat related items. So there's like little balls of yarn and some mice. I've seen some birds, there's even a bird sitting on this one's head. And then, yeah, and then it's just got this really pretty pink background and there's even love hearts scattered in there and little kitty paw prints. And yeah, it just looks really pretty and yeah, really just really cute and fun. So this is actually what attracted me to the brand. I saw um, some friends on Puzzlegram um, post this this one and I was like oh what's that and yeah and then that's how I discovered the brand so even though um, they've been around since 2020 I sort of only I think first saw them the end of last year so 2021 um, but yeah uh, glad I found them because from what I've heard people seem to quite enjoy their puzzles and think that the quality is pretty good so yeah I'm really interested to see um, what this puzzle is going to be like um, so in a sec we will do a quick unboxing and look at the packaging and then take a look at the pieces and then of course we're going to get into some puzzling. Okay so let's have a quick look at the packaging and then we'll open it up. So the front of the box just has the image itself on it, it doesn't have any other info so very straight to the point. And the sides look like they have all have the same info on it so um, we've got Two Bird Press, the name of the company here, Puzzled Cats. The puzzle name 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle and a little smaller version of the entire image and that's basically repeated on each of the sides so yeah nothing nothing different really and then we've got some other info on the back um, it says puzzled cats and has the full size image again and then it says 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle printed on recycled paper safe non-toxic inks glare free matte finish sounds good to me and the size, which is 70 by 50 centimeters, which is a sort of standard uh, 1000 piece puzzle size. And I'll pop the inches somewhere on the screen. And um, oh, and uh, you've probably already noticed, but it's a portrait size puzzle. And then we've got a bit of other info down here. We've got their website, a barcode, also a QR code. I haven't scanned that, but I'm guessing it takes you to their website maybe. And then, yeah, just a bit of copyright info, designed in Canada, made in China, and a bit of caution about the small pieces. So let's crack this open. Ha ah, finally. So yeah, just blank on the inside. And then just cute pale pink nothing else on the edges. I always forget to like talk about what's on these four sides for some reason, but not today. And then, ah, oh my God, this is gonna make me happy. We have a Ziploc plastic bag, hooray. So 
You still need to cut it along the top by the looks of it, but that makes me really happy that I finally, you know, have a puzzle with a reusable plastic bag in it. So very pleased about that. Um, yeah, and the pieces, oh, they look interesting. I'm excited to open them up in a sec. And then, yeah, just empty on the inside. So yeah, no leaflets or anything pretty basic, but yeah, I'm definitely pleased about this bag. So let's, I guess, open it up. So bear with me. Okay. Let's see if I can get this open. Ugh. I always struggle trying to open these for the first time. No. I feel like I need a degree in bag opening. Success. I feel like we're having a few struggles here trying to get things open today. All right. So straight away, I can see there's a little bit of puzzle dust. It looks pretty fine, but I can see sort of a coating on the inside of the bag. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how much of a pain that's going to be, or if it's going to be a non-issue. And, oh, dropping pieces everywhere. Wow, the pieces are very pretty. They're like sort of nice and pastel, just like pretty much they seem to match what's on the box, I'd say. Like the printing seems pretty clear and the colors look the same, um, which are quite pastel -y and cute. I mean, there's some bright ones like red and black and these darker ones, for the, but for the most part, I guess the design is a fairly sort of pastel, pretty design. So straight away, these actually remind me of another brand, um, which is a good thing because I really like the other brand. They actually really remind me of the Grateful House puzzle pieces. They sort of uh, look and yeah, at first glance they look and I guess sort of feel pretty similar. They might even be by the, main, the same manufacturer. I will have to sort of uh, check and get back to you on that. Um, so yeah, let's just, I guess have a look. So like for the most part, these seem to be pretty standard cut, but um, they seem to have unique enough piece shapes from what I can tell, like, you know, you've got some pretty normal sort of piece shapes where you've got like the four tabs, the one tab, the three tabs, what else? Um, your normal sort of edge pieces. Um, and everything seems pretty like, I guess, regular shaped. But there's like a few here, like even this one, one of the tabs is fairly square, like sort of flat on one end. So yeah, I guess there's maybe these sort of little differences that might make the piece fit nicer. I don't know. Um, that from my experience, that seems to be what makes piece, pieces fit better, like no false fits, I guess, um, is by having these sort of small little, uh, I guess, unique bits about the pieces instead of them all being like really similar. So. Yeah, so it's going to be really interesting to see how uh, this goes with puzzling. I'm excited to try it. But yeah, so uh, I guess let's talk about the rest of the piece pieces in terms of quality. Um, so they are, let's put these back and they are a sort of, I guess a gray board, like a sort of brownie gray on the back. Um, they seem like a pretty nice thickness, like, I mean, I they don't seem to bend too easily. I think if you really put in effort, you could bend them, but I don't want to do that. So I think they seem to be, they seem sturdy and pretty strong. Um, I like haven't seen any bent pieces yet or any like frayed edges or anything like that. So, I mean, I'm only at the top here, so I'm sure like if I go in further, I may discover some, but hopefully not. Like so far, I haven't seen anything um, alluding to that. So. Yeah, so definitely hoping that there won't be any damaged pieces. Um, I don't see why there would be. And yeah, so yeah, pretty pretty normal, nothing weird, but yeah, nice thickness. And then the top is a really lovely, very matte and linen finish. So yeah, like the back of the box described, a nice non-glare um, finish. Like, yeah, there's definitely no sheen or glare on this at all. So I am really excited about that. I've just had a lot of like issues with sheen and glare lately with all the puzzles I've been doing. So I'm looking forward to doing one that doesn't have that problem. 
Um, yeah, and it's got that sort of, those little crisscrossy lines on it. Um, you can sort of just feel it, like it's pretty subtle, but you can definitely sort of see it. Um, I'll definitely put a close up of the pieces in the corner. Um, but yeah, so it definitely reminds me of Grateful House, but I really enjoy the Grateful House quality. So, and actually come to think of it, this sort of box shape and size reminds me of their puzzles too. So I'm gonna have to investigate and see if there's like a, you know, if they do compare or not. Um, I might actually pop that in straight after this. And yeah, and the box is really nice and sturdy. I sort of forgot to mention that, like it's nice and sturdy. It's not, it's kind of like fairly thin. So it would actually look pretty nice on your bookshelf or something, or even if you wanted to face it this way. Um, yeah, so let's, I will quickly get out a Grateful House puzzle and we're going to quickly compare the two. Okay, so I grabbed one of my Grateful House ones. This is their Dolk Welcome Back one, 1,000 pieces. So at first glance, it's similar, but I the box is actually different. So let's see, like there is a ugh, same length, but the height of the Grateful House one is a bit taller, I guess, or essentially, I guess it's wider, you, like you could say. And then um, it's pretty similar in terms of like the depth, like a little bit different. But yeah, so ugh, I'm not doing a great job of this, but I guess you can see here that, yeah, the two bird one is definitely a little bit narrower, I guess. Um, the other thing is they're both sturdy, but um, the Grateful House one actually has the matte linen finish on the box, whereas this is a sort of very smooth, not glossy, but just a very smooth finish. And then let's, yeah, um, let's have a look at the pieces. Oh, well, I mean, obviously another difference is um, theirs comes in a fabric bag and comes with a poster and stuff, but I guess that's things you could probably add later when you manufacture things, I don't know. Um, so I'll just pull out a handful of pieces here. and Have a look. Okay, so there are definitely differences, like the backs of the Grateful House are like, definitely darker like they're more a dark gray and let's see thickness seems to be about the same i'll try and pop a little close-up sort of footage in the corner as well just so you can see what i'm talking about yeah thickness is similar maybe the grateful house one is a little bit thicker i'm thinking but yeah but pretty similar but the feel is very very similar and the look is really similar as well like they're both got this real matte, um, no sheen, no glare finish, and both have that textured linen, matte linen finish. I would say though that maybe the Grateful House one is like a little bit more prominent. It's really subtle. Like I can probably just see the crisscrossy lines on the Grateful House one slightly more, but it's yeah, really subtle. But that that could be to do with ink or I don't know anything. I, I don't know all the specifics of how puzzles are manufactured. So I don't know why it would be more prominent on one than the other. Um, but like looking at this, I mean, the pieces are fairly different, but that's mainly because the pieces of both have these very uh, sort of, like I said, kind of unique piece shapes, like standard piece shapes, but with like little slight wonky or skewed edges or different tabs, things that make them a bit more unique. So. I think it's gonna be hard to try and find an exact replica of this one. Um, but I guess, let's see, like they're si pretty similar. They're not too different in overall size, I would say, like they they do seem somewhat similar. I mean, it's really hard to tell because of how skewed and like that they are. So yeah, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if they're the same manufacturer or not, but they definitely, feel uh, quite similar in many respects. So yeah, quite interesting. Um, so I guess if the Grateful House uh, quality is anything to go by, I'm definitely excited for this one because um, that would mean that this is gonna be a really nice puzzle to put together. And um, yeah, because I found that the Grateful House quality is just really top notch and the pieces fit together comfortably and yeah, no glare and not much puzzle dust and stuff so yeah i'm really hoping that uh the two bird press puzzle is equally as 
awesome in quality and puzzling experience, I guess. So um, let's pop all this away and then let's get into some puzzling. So let's have a quick chat about my approach to putting this puzzle together. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm basically just going to try and find you know, lots of red bits and put them in a pile and yellow bits and green and black and blue and so on and just try and make the cats from the piles of different coloured puzzle pieces, I guess. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to focus on or worry about doing the border first. I think I'll just sort of do it as like as I go, I suppose. Like if I find a cat that like this blue one and I find a border piece as part of it, great. Just add it in there. But I don't think I'll worry about trying to find all the edge or border pieces for now. Um, but what I am going to do is, so this box, even though it's very nice and compact for storing the puzzle, it is quite deep and narrow. So it makes sort of like trying to dig for pieces a bit difficult. So I've got a couple of these big trays here. So I think what I'm going to do is just like empty out some of the pieces onto these trays and then it should be hopefully a bit easier to sort. Um, I'm not expecting to like so you find all the piece of like every color straight away but um, I think doing it like this might just make things a little easier. I've got a bunch more of these trays too if I end up needing them, but uh, we'll see how we go, I guess. So yeah, just emptied all of that out there. So I guess we can just pop the box aside. I think it's pretty clear like what we're sort of looking for. We don't need to see all the details like straight away. Um, so yeah, so we'll just, you know, put all the red together. I mean, I don't think some of these are more orangey, but they probably belong to multiple cats, I guess, but that's okay. There's a few pieces here like stuck together like this, but, or like, I guess they get wedged together, but that seems to be pretty common with a lot of puzzles um, where they get stuck together in the box. And then we might do some yellow as well. Or is it mustard? I don't know. It's up for debate. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to keep plodding along and sort of putting as many of, you know, make as many piles as I can of different coloured cats, I guess. Hopefully this ends up making things a little easier. Let's have a look in this tray as well. Okay, I clearly put a lot more pieces in this tray than the other one. That's all right. Some more of the mustard. And you know, obviously there's going to be pieces eventually that have multiple colors on them, not just from a single cat, I'm guessing. That's okay. We'll sort of deal with it as we get to it. I guess there's a fair bit of red cat going on in this puzzle. But yeah, so far the pieces are definitely very matte and there's no glare or sheen at all, which is really good. It's helping me see all the colors really easily. All right, so yeah, I'm just gonna kind of keep sifting through these two trays here and you know, I might start a blue pile as well, or maybe a green pile, because I can definitely see some green here. And there's lots of blue as well. So yeah, I might um, start putting some other 
piles of colors together and um, yeah, and then start putting this puzzle together. So I'm back and I have to say, so far I'm really enjoying this puzzle. I think the cats look super cute. I really love their little comical expressions. They look very suspicious of each other and a bit shifty eyed and curious. And I really like the colors of the cats too. Like there's a fun mix of sort of pastels and brights. Um, yeah, it's just really pretty and just really cute as well. And so far this puzzle is proving to be really quick to put together. So. To get to this point and including sorting, it's only taken a bit over two and a half hours. So to me, that feels very fast. It's definitely one of the, I guess, quickest 1000 piece puzzles I've done in a very long time. So if ever, maybe. And apart from that, I have to say the quality is proving to be excellent. Like I'm having such a nice time putting this together and the level of quality is just really good in that it's making the puzzling experience go really smoothly and it's just really enjoyable. So the reason why I say that is because the pieces just fit together really nicely. Like I don't think I've really had any false fits, maybe one if that, um, but yeah, the pieces just have a really nice fit to them and they're like really smooth to the touch and there's no glare or sheen at all, which is super helpful. And you can pick up sections of puzzle that are very like substantial. So that's been super helpful putting all these cats together because it means I can work on the cat shapes in front of me and then just move them around the board later. It also means we might be doing a puzzle pickup later too. So keep an eye out. Um, yeah, so really pleased about that. And I think um, when I poured the pieces out of the plastic bag, I said there was a bit of puzzle dust in the bag and there is a bit of puzzle dust um, on the board here but it's so like minimal and tiny and I almost pretty much forgot about it it's been such a non-issue hasn't caused any problems like no sneezing or anything and I haven't really felt like the pieces have been very dusty at all so yeah definitely a non-issue I'd say um, what else like 
Mm, yeah, I think that pretty much sums up how things are going so far. Definitely, yeah, really enjoying the experience and looking forward to finishing this. Um, I don't know if the rest of this puzzle is going to be as quick as the first part. I mean, even though we've done a lot of it, there's still like a lot of pink to fill in and a few other cats and some mice and balls of yarn. So we'll, we'll see how long it takes, but hopefully not too long. Um, and I guess the other really obvious thing is you probably notice I've been working on this sideways, even though it is a portrait puzzle. And I just tend to do that a lot with um, like portrait puzzles because I just find it easier to work on them this way. It doesn't really bother me that the picture is sideways, but I'll definitely turn it around after it's finished so we can see it properly. Um, yeah, so I think in a sec I will get back to puzzling and hopefully finish this and then we'll come back and just have a chat about the overall experience and what I think of the brand. I'm back and I've finished this adorable cat puzzle. I definitely had a lot of fun doing this one. I just really love how it's turned out. I think the cats are just super cute with their like very silly comical expressions. And I really enjoy the sort of color palette, like the mix of brights and like fun pastel colors. It's just really pretty. And yeah, and there's like lots of other cute little details as well as the cats, like little paw prints and balls of yarn and birds and mice and things like that. So yeah, it's such a really cute design, I guess. And um, apart from that, it was also a very quick puzzle to put together. Um, it only took me from sorting to endpoint four hours and 15 minutes. So I think that's pretty quick for a 1000 piece puzzle. So yeah, that sort of makes me feel like it's uh, quite an accessible puzzle for like a range of different puzzlers and even age groups like I think kids could have a good time putting this one together because it's so colorful and fun and just really quick and easy to do and you know and even people who just want a simple puzzle to do and a relaxing puzzle I think this one would really hit the mark with that um, so let's sort of talk quality um, pretty much like I said before I've really enjoyed the quality on this so the pieces are definitely very matte and like a matte linen finish. They're like very smooth and very matte to touch. There's been zero glare or sheen. So yeah, that's made the puzzling experience just really enjoyable and like very easy going and yeah, not at all frustrating. So really glad there's like no glare because I've had a lot of puzzles lately that have sort of had a lot of, like had a very glossy or a bit of a sheen to the surface making the puzzling experience a bit tricky, whereas this didn't have that issue at all. So super happy about that. And then the thing I like the best about the quality is the piece fit. So even though the piece shapes look very, I guess, normal and fairly standard, they do in fact have fairly unique and little unique differences on them, which sort of make the fit quite unique. So um, yeah, because of that, like all the pieces fit 
very like nicely together everything sort of went where it was supposed to um, yeah I didn't really have any issues I think there might have been like one false fit if that um, but yeah for the most part everything just fits so nicely together and the other thing about the quality and the fit as well is that it's a very comfortable fit it's not too loose it's not too tight and you can pick up very large sections and I really feel like this puzzle turned out to be or well, this design turned out to be the perfect design to actually try that out with because I was putting together these cat shapes um, I was putting them together in front of me and then when I wanted to move them to their like proper place on the board I just picked them up and moved them and it was like all very easy and like simple and no issues at all so yeah really happy about the like the fit of these pieces they just I just think it's really fantastic I guess the only other thing about the quality that might be a slight con is puzzle dust like there is puzzle dust but really it's actually so minuscule um, like I can see a few specks on the board here and there but for the most part I pretty much just forgot about it like I it wasn't an issue at all I pretty much forgot it existed um, even my hands didn't really feel that dusty afterwards so yeah I think for someone like me who is a bit of a uh, who really kind of hates puzzle dust I didn't find this an issue so I guess if you're like me you'll probably enjoy this puzzle I think um, so yeah overall I yeah just had a fantastic time I feel like actually uh, it exceeded my expectations especially with the quality like I had sort of heard whispers out there that the quality was nice but to me like you know there's so many different uh, I guess standards and expectations of like what's considered good quality amongst different puzzle brands so you don't really know until you try it um, I feel like I have fairly high expectations I've tried a lot of different puzzle brands and yeah I've definitely uh, you know I, I guess I'm at the point now where I'm getting pretty fussy about what I like and, and what I don't like and I definitely feel like two bird press puzzles really you know uh, meet my expectations and have a very like high level of quality so yeah really pleased with the puzzle and their puzzling experience overall so let's quickly talk price um, so I grabbed this off their website it was about 26 US dollars and that's kind of at the moment equivalent to 36 Australian dollars so I'll pop that on the screen um, there was also postage on top of that because for international shipping uh, I think that was 10 US dollars I did buy another puzzle so I guess you know you could sort of split that across your puzzles if you buy more than one um, but let's just focus on the actual price so I guess for 36 Australian dollars here in Australia that's sort of roughly mid to high range like you can get a lot of Ravens burgers seem to be around that price Cloudberries, um, Gibson's those sort of puzzles tend to be in that price range and I think all of those have pretty decent nice quality and nice packaging so I feel like uh, you know with this puzzle being at that price point um, I could definitely recommend it I think yeah it's absolutely worth that price because you're just getting beautiful uh, artwork fantastic quality and to be honest I actually probably prefer the quality of this than like Cloudberries and maybe even Ravensburger because I mean I like them all for different reasons but the thing that bothers me about Cloudberries is there's a lot of false fits just because of the cut so and I find that very frustrating as much as I love their puzzles and I love the quality apart from that and even with Ravensburger I just <laughs> the crazy amount of puzzle dust really bothers me so yeah to have a puzzle that's like at a similar price point that doesn't have those issues is just fantastic um, yeah and also I guess for the price you're getting nice packaging you're getting a little reusable plastic bag um, I think the only other thing I could think of that maybe they would consider adding to their puzzles in the future would be a reference poster um, yeah this one didn't come with that at all I feel like for this particular design though um, like the box image is probably big enough like the cats and even the small details are pretty clear on the box so I think this puzzle probably didn't need a poster but you know depending on what the artwork is maybe it'd be nice for them to include a poster in the future but I don't think it's a deal breaker to be honest so yeah yeah I definitely would recommend uh, this brand and this particular puzzle image as well 
So I guess in the comments below, let me know what you thought of this puzzle, which is called Puzzled Cats. Um, you know, did you like it or are you more, maybe you're more of a dog person? And you know, what did you think of this brand? Is it a brand that you'd like to try or maybe you have tried it? Um, yeah, so I guess let me know in the comments below. Have you tried it? Do you want to try it? That sort of thing. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles. And for even more puzzle content, you can check me out over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore juby. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye. Are you ready, Misty? What do you think, Misty?